your primary home is your best and first investment. I tell my clients, if you only have one property in your life, and that's your house, that's good enough. You don't have to worry because that house is an asset. Asset, it may not have rental income, but it has a value. It's a store of value. listeners on your wonderful podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about our conversation this today. Kasi ako personally, matagal ko na tong iniisip but I don't know where to start. I was just going back to why I wanted to talk about this topic because people want to invest in properties for various reasons. There are those who invest to sell. Diba? They buy on a pre-selling rate and then they sell it before it gets turned over. There are people who invest it to rent it out eventually. And there's, there are those people who invest it for them to actually live on live in that um, property in the future. How different are those are the considerations for these um, different kinds of investors? Wow. Michelle, I love what you just mentioned. Because you know, eh, the, the downside of property is it's being like to categorize as one but mm. in reality the real property business has many like many facets many Correct. angle many perspectives so definitely mm. number one your primary home mm. if you're buying a primary home your considerations are you know what's 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 good for me what neighborhood i want to what is my proximity to my to the school of my mm-hmm. kids or my work that's the primary home. If you have a condo unit right now and it's vacant, okay, don't worry. I mean, stop worrying. Turn that into action. How do you do it? First, the internet is widely open right now. You can just advertise on your own, do your Facebook post. You can put it in carousel. Just make your property visible. It has to be out there. The property has to be above average, decent. It's just like you, when you go abroad, you want to stay in a place na decent. You don't want to choose an Airbnb na, na bare or kulang-kulang or dirty or, or yung cortina not so nice. Diba? You want a feel. Letter, number one, P, property. Number two, P, price. Right? Make your price reasonable. Diba? Um, like for, for us, we, we rarely make our price super high. Because you want to be competitive. Just like in business, you want your price to be competitive. Okay. If you want a bit of a premium, just make it not so over. And number three, process. Process means when they talk to you, how do you engage your inquiry? Understand that property is no different than your business. Oh, Mr. Tenant, Mr. Inquiry, hello, hello, welcome. I would love to meet with you. I would love to assure you that my property is good. And I would love to assure you that you are in good hands staying in my property. Are you from Japan? Yes, let me assure you that you'll be safe in my property. Flip it around. If you were to go abroad, hindi ba, Michelle, yun yung gusto mo? Mm-hmm. That you have a landlord that takes care of you, acknowledges you, um, affirms you, assures you that it's safe. So a lot of the expats, they don't see that in the landlords. So that's something that we can improve on. So kami, we, we win. We try to win in all three. In the property, mm. in the price, and in the process. So people always think about this. Do you rent or do you buy? Your primary home is your best and first investment. I tell my clients, if you only have one property in your life, and that's your house, that's good enough. You don't have to worry. Because that house is an asset. Asset, it may not have rental income, but it has a value. It's a store of value. You know, guys, just like business, rental property, the spending power of the population you are servicing is very important. 
what you don't want is to be in a mismatch. Mismatch meaning your product is too cheap in an area na medyo up, upscale. They would want more quality, more service. So, important din. So, look at property as a business venture from analyzing your market to looking at your financials to advertising and marketing your property all the way to managing your operations and collections all the way to fantastic customer service. So, on our basic, um, for since I also have listeners who are like 17 year old to 20, to their, I guess, early working life, you want early 20s, that they... They want to finally decide whether um, I'll rent or I'll buy. And if they did decide to now, they want to buy na lang. What are the factors that they need to consider prior to invest to buying a house? Okay, if you're young, uh, for I guess if you're a starter, whether you're young, you're, you're a late bloomer, 30s, mm. you're a super late bloomer, 40s, 50s. Um, my first advice is find a role model. Yun na lang. I think I want that. Find a role model. Find somebody in your family, in your circle, in your business world that you look up as a role model because you like his values. You like her. You like her values. You like um, how she or he has uh, played out her investment, and then you pattern it after that person. Kung gusto mo na, uy. I want a flipping buy and sell model. Find a mo- role model for that. If I want long term, like what Carl D say, saying, passive income, develop over time, I will follow Carl D's model. If I want to build and sell, I'm more active. I really want to be doing something, counting, computing, very, very active role. You find somebody na yan naman yung model nila. So that's my first advice sa mga starters. Find a role model. Number two, siguro for the youngster, starter, um, check your affordability. This is applicable to the oh, previous youngster. Kasi ngayon, marami na mga bata na they made it big in e-commerce, eh, di ba? Yeah. So they're wealthy. Well, I guess, wag yung ano, hindi siguro yung mga outlier. Okay. Like, if we go back to before, and I'm just a regular employee or a regular um, graduate who is now considering to buy a house. Okay. If you're a regular employee and you're renting right now, you're probably throwing away 20,000 a month and giving to people like me who is landlord. Uh, but don't share this to a lot of people because we will lose tenants if we everybody just <laughs> bought their own property. <laughs> so if you're paying 20,000 a month, mga sis, mga brothers, sayang pera yun. We throw it away. And I would tell my, my my coaching clients, I would rather you pay a bank with interest than throw your money to landlords. Kasi that's totally gone. If you throw it to the bank with interest, it still accumulates after 10 years and the property is yours. Diba? Yun yung nakalimutan ng maraming tao because you know, a lot of uh, the, a lot of our elders, our, our family, parents, they taught us, wag kang utang. Bangko. What if hindi mo mabayaran yan? Magrenta ka na lang. <laughs> oh. It's really a, a strategic mindset. It's a lack of lack of ano ba, lack of strategy, I guess. Kasi you're right na if you rent, you can easily exit. The obligation is not there. But if you catch yourself renting for 10 years na, ay sayang na yun. Di ba? That could have been paid for the bank. So, if you're a regular worker, office worker, or starter, and you somehow have excess income, then uh, ideally, look into bank financing, talk to a mentor ideally, so they can guide you, tell you what to watch out for. Then just change it to a loan. Change it to a loan, and then buy your property in installment. Hopefully, if you buy something in installment, it's nearing your move in, move out, so you can stop the rent and move into a unit. Yeah. Putting it into property, if you buy something really cheap, you may have, you think you may have saved it, uh, saved money early on, but years from now, it might be not beneficial for you at all because the quality has, you know, has suffered and 
people will not like it as much as you know getting it from a property na mas reputable, mas maganda yung quality, mas magandang materials yung ginamit to build that property to begin with. Exactly. And the biggest trick of property is the maintenance. That's it. That's how. That's why buildings in Tokyo, even if they're 70 years old, 50 years old, buildings in Paris, even if they're 100 years old, because they're maintained well, they keep their value. So that's what you need to look for: a building that's well maintained. In all investments that you make, all business, there has to be that strategy in place. Now, what if? What if I passed away? What if my wife passes away? What if my business closes down? What if I lose my job? All of those what if should be in place. So when that happens, you do not panic. And I think yun yung kulang minsan sa, 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 in, sa, in our society right now. It's always just, how much money would I make? <laughs> exactly. How what is my return? Yeah. Yeah. As an investor, your property has to solve a market problem. Diba? If, uh, like for example, we when the Pogo started to come, we were telling in our talks that there is a demand for dormitories. There's a demand for dormitories. And true, diba? you hear dormitories going up in value because the Pogos needed to house their China employees in one spot that they can control that they can shuttle in and out. I was talking about that um, in 2017-16 about the dormitories. So find the solve a market problem. The the high end properties are solving the needs for for the expats to have a property that is medio equal to what they are used to in their mm. country. Number six is consistent execution. When you have a property, just like business, you have to constantly refresh your unit, constantly advertise, constantly extend customer service to your tenant, treat them well, and just keep it going. Your property has to always look new. 